tonight's preview, Tottenham versus West Ham. And I'm going to be honest, it's one I've not really been looking forward to doing. And that's nothing to do with the fact that it's Tottenham and I'm worried about the result or anything like that. It's the fact that I admire them at the moment. I admire their manager and I don't like the fact I feel like that. I, I, it's really bloody alien and I hate it. I hate the fact I'm feeling that way about Tottenham. But, you know, I'm, I'm just being honest here. Like, I do, like, you look at what he's doing at that football club and there's that feeling, isn't there, of what if, you know, what if. That, I mean... We know for a fact that West Ham were very keen on uh, Postecoglou while he was at um, at Celtic last season, and not only that, I think he would have taken the West Ham job had we had gone uh, in early. I think we'd have, we would have got him, but we didn't. Um, obviously, we're with David Moyes. It, I'm not here to talk about that too much. I'm just here to talk about uh, obviously the match itself, but and, and obviously give out my thoughts on Tottenham. It's going to be one. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to try and get through pretty quickly because I really don't want to be sitting here talking about how much I'm enjoying seeing Tottenham play this because I really just hate saying that. I don't want to say it, but yeah, I've got to talk about um, them uh, as I always do to start with. And I'm going to start with the manager. He's a breath of fresh air. He really is to the Premier League. I love the bloke in terms of how he handles the press. I, I just like how he carries himself. I like the style of football. Um, he just seems the epitome of that sort of. Um, uh, manager who can handle relationships very well. He's a good man manager. You know, he gets gets the players on side. You can see they're all fighting for him. And oh, do you know what? I get that feeling. I hate saying all this, but I really do. But I get that feeling like if he'd been at West Ham, I th- just think West Ham fans would have really taken to him well. I think he would have just fitted so, so well in uh, East London. But no, he's not. He's in North London and that's it. And you know what I mean, and I get the feeling as well he's going to be there for a bloody long while as well. Because he's... he's He's a good manager, you know. He he is what I mean. He, there's not many uh, things you can sort of say that you, you don't like about him. He's, he's as I say, he's a very likable guy, but he plays that style of football on the ground, exciting. He sort of admits it. He just wants to go for it. He doesn't want to play defensively. He wants to attack, and you know. And we, I mean, let's be honest, we've got the polar opposite of that, and it's frustrating the fan base. And dare I say, I did sort of say it in the previous video re- regarding the, the Palace game that was so like a lacklustre performance from West Ham and frustrating and look, not the end of the world. Of course it's not. I'm not, I am not. don't want to paint this doom and gloom picture about West Ham at all. I don't think it's that horrendous. But you go to watch that game and you think, oh, I wish we go for it. And then you then go and watch literally and like, you know, straight after uh, walking back in the cold and get, get back to watch the Tottenham game um, against Manchester City you know, a depleted squad of injury. And yet, look at them, they're just going for it, exciting and really up for it. And it just, yeah, it, the total contrast was um, yeah, very evident, wasn't it? And yeah, I can't say highly enough really about him. I think he's a, a very good manager. And it is what it is. He's, he's, fit, he's fitted in well and he's taken to, the, taken to the Premier League very well. And all right, I mean, their, their run's over and their form's a little bit shaky. But, you know, frustratingly, they're quite an entertaining team to watch, aren't they, Spurs, this season? They, they really are. They're, they're doing well under him and they seem to be settling down. I just think I think he's doing very well. Very, very impressed. Um, another point I wanted to make was Harry Kane's departure. I mean, when he left in the summer uh, to go to Bayern Munich, I, like many, of with my feelings towards Tottenham, I actually thought, you know what, they're going to really struggle. I think this is going to be a real dent in there. You know, they're going to lose this 30 goal a season striker. What on earth are they going to do? And I just, I, I really thought this is going to be a team. This is, we're going to see a real dip now in Spurs for the next for the next period of time until they sort of can try and find a player to replace him. But you, you've got to admire how they've handled it because you wouldn't even really know that he's gone. You know, they, they just handled it. They, they, the signs they've made have been great. The managers have said fitted him really well. The style of football, it's the Kane departure sort of been forgotten. Like, I, I mean, no one's really talking about it. And and this is Harry Kane, by the way, who's absolutely smashing it in, in Germany. And yet we're not even really talking about it. You know, we're not going, oh, look what you're missing. And that, and that, I think that's a big credit um, to them, I've got to say, because... Um, that that was one I think many p- people were expecting to be a big topic of discussion this season. The fact that Tottenham have lost their talisman, they've lost their captain, they've lost this goal scoring machine, you know, breaking records, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and yet we're not even mentioning it. So, you know, credit to them. You know, as I say, a bit painful to say, but it's true. And uh, yeah, they, they seem to be going very well. I've listened to a few players as well um, regarding Tottenham, who I think are doing very well really admire uh james madison of course he's injured which thank god uh, for this game because he's, he's been excellent uh for tottenham he is a player isn't he am i, am I the only one that thinks that james madison was a tottenham player before he was at tottenham do you know what i mean he's like the epitome of a tottenham player like the haircut the look everything about him 
he should have been at Tottenham years ago. Like it's just, I always thought at some point you'll go to Tottenham and he just sort of fits in, doesn't he? He fits the mould of a Spurs player for me. And um, of course he could have been a West Ham player once upon a time. Was it, was it David Moyes, wasn't it? It was David Moyes, wasn't it? That didn't want him. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Um, but yeah, no, very good player. Very come in and done and done wonders for them. Obviously, Premier League experience. So he was always going to hit the ground running. But um, no, but very, very good. And obviously, he picked up this injury, which is a blow to them. But and you can see that with their results lately. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, Johnson as well, who they brought in uh, from Nottingham Forest. I mean, a, a very good player. Very exciting. Um, again, I just think fits their system very well. Fits the kind of mould of a Spurs player. And yeah, he's, he's, he's done very well. Um, and obviously, it was a blow for, for Forrest to lose him. But Johnson's done well. He's, he's slotted him really well. Um, I, I don't want to talk about him too much. But Son was obviously a, a, a huge player for Tottenham. And I, I, almost like I think he's thriving, actually, with the departure of Kane. Um, West Ham are kind of experiencing that in some regard, aren't we? Of certain players that have sort of... Have sort of stepped up a little bit since Declan Rice's departure. I mean, really, well, I was talking about like Tottenham have handled the um, the Rice. Oh, sorry, the, the 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 Kane sale quite well. West Ham, you could say, have done the same about Rice. Really, I mean, we, I think that was going to be a big topic of discussion this season. Obviously, Rice is doing his thing at Arsenal. I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm not going to talk about that. But how West Ham are uh, doing, I think, a fair reflection. We've done well. I think to be fair, we're not really talking about it, are we? We don't sit every week going, "Oh, if only I had Rice on the pitch." I don't think anyone said that. Um, so I think that's a good credit to us as well. Obviously, I've talked about Thomas Suchek's sort of resurgence since his departure, uh, Declan's departure, I think is evident. Um, I think the same has to be said for Son. I think he's, I mean, obviously, he's always been a very, very uh, big player for Tottenham and scoring um, in decent numbers every season. But you just get the feeling that kind of, now the, the Kane shadow's removed now, he can kind of really flourish. And he's, just, yeah, he's an exceptionally talented player. Um, and you talk about, uh, players that have, uh, resurgence when you talk about Tottenham. I mean, Lacelso's got to be up there for a player that was you know, not regarded very well at, at the club and wasn't really fitting in and looked to have no future whatsoever. Wasn't getting any game time at all. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about Tottenham fans' view on him, uh, but um, he certainly uh, emerged, isn't he, from Postecoglou's uh, appointment? Just seems to have be flourishing and doing really well and. No, I mean, it, it looks like a club that I think many expected to struggle, really did expect to struggle uh, with all the change, but they're just taken to it very well. I think the manager's done well. I think the, the players have settled down. I think they, just, they look like a very good side. I mean, obviously, they've got this terrible injury crisis at the moment for that club. Um, and they're, OK, they handled it well against Manchester City, but the, the recent results are kind of reflecting a team that's struggling um, for their squad numbers at the moment. And... Hopefully, West Ham can take advantage of that. Um, before we go into West Ham, let's talk about their form. I mean, the last four games, they've, they haven't won a game. Only one draw against Man City. They've lost three. Um, I think the one before that wasn't Matt. I think it might be been Aston Villa. I think they lost at home 2-1. So, they've they've struggled. They, they, their form is not excellent. And uh, despite their... Um, I don't know, kind of necessarily heroics. Yeah, it's, you know, a decent performance. Decent performance against Man City. I mean, obviously, they really did well to come back. Showed a lot of character and fair play to them for that. Uh, and, and the fact that they just go and give it a go, I, I admire that because, you know, we, as West Ham fans, we know we don't bloody do that. We, we rarely go to games, do we, and go, let's just bloody go for it. You know that's not how we set up. But I will say, I actually think that the way West Ham set up actually will suit us against Tottenham because I think that Man City's sort of eagerness to win that game and going all out and all attack, I think, actually suited Tottenham and, how, and their game plan. Whereas they're not going to get that against West Ham. West Ham are not going to be a team that's going to go to um, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and give it and go gung ho, you know, give it everything and try and get a win. I, I don't think that's how West Ham will play. We will know how we will play. We will play uh, low block and play counter. And I think that might suit us. I really do. I think that might frustrate Tottenham. I think they'll find this a very different experience. But um, yeah, but we're playing a team certainly out of form results wise. I mean, I. I wasn't expecting that type of performance against Man City. So it's certainly given us, you know, food for thought and, and some concerns. But as I say, I just think that this is going to be a very different game for them. I think the way Man City, as I said, I think played into their hands a little bit. So, yeah, um, on to West Ham, though. I mean, we're, we're talking about um, the last four games. We're, obviously, Tottenham haven't got a win, only one draw. West Ham, three wins and a draw, no defeats. And people talk about, oh, yeah, but look at the game teams we play. But I'm only just, you know, listening out the games. This is fact is the last four games is how we're looking West Ham are in decent form res results wise performance wise not really no we haven't really seen many really good performances have we for quite a while um I mean really I, I when you think about this season I, Brighton away stands out to me for a good performance 
Um, you know, we have we have had a couple of decent ones, but um, Chelsea was pretty good. But there hasn't been many. There hasn't been many games that you go, wow, West Ham were exceptional. You know that we haven't been. So we need to up our game. And and this brings us to my next comment of David Moyes. I mean, David Moyes, to be fair to him, as he's not sitting back and being arrogant about his, these performances. He's not shying away from it. He's being very, very vocal. A lot of comments um, on the previous video were saying, and, and well, the, the, the manager sort of effectively deflecting the blame. He's blaming the players. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know if he's blaming the players as such. I'm not sure. I, I, I feel like... I do feel like Moyes would want us to play a bit better than this. I don't think he wants us to play badly. Do you know what I mean? And, and just sit back and defend. I'd like to think that's not the case anyway. So... At the end of the day, the onus is on him now. He's vocally saying to everybody, the press and everyone, I want to see West Ham attack. I want to see better football. I'm expecting a better performances than the second half of the season. This is what he's been saying in the lead up to this game. So really, he's put the pressure on himself and, and the players to perform like that, to put in a really good performance. So it's going to be very interesting. He uses the word he wants to see some personality out there. Well, there's no better time, is there? Tottenham away is a game when you're going to need personality. This is a This is a big rival. Fans, you know, absolutely despise one another when it comes to this 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 game. So, um, and it, it's a big occasion. Yeah, you know, West Ham want to see you know a good performance. Whenever we play Tottenham, we always want to see a good performance. It, it, it will not be accepted if we don't. And you know, it's been a while. It, you know, it shocked me when I, the last time we won there, which was the Mikel Antonio uh, goal, the one nil first to, to obviously score there and first to win there at their new stadium. That was in the 2018-19 season. I mean. Bloody hell, like, I didn't realise it was that long ago. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, yeah, I think, geez, it has been a while. So it's about time now we go and do something special there. So let, let's hope this is the occasion. It, Moise's comments are certainly shaping up to um, being that West Ham are going to put in a good performance. I mean, he's, he's put himself in that kind of, um, under that spotlight, I think. So it's going to be interesting, really interesting. Um, uh, a player I want to talk about uh, regarding this game, I think his importance now to the side is becoming humongous is um Mohamed Kudus. I mean, we, we know what a talent he is anyway. We've seen we've seen it really since he started and you can see really what he was doing at Ajax, what a player is, but my word, he he is really looking a monster of a player. I'm gonna do a video on him uh later in the week in regards to some comments regarding our project and how important he is and talking about his long term future. Um, we're hoping to get a bit more news on that as well, um, which would be interesting. But I'll tell you, I'm blown away by him. I really am. What a talent. I mean, his performance in that Crystal Palace game, bearing in mind that no one really put in a great shift, really. I think Bowen was quite isolated. I thought Paquetta didn't play particularly great. He played OK. He did a few things, but ultimately uh, we weren't um, great. Uh, I thought that um, even Will Prowse struggled a little bit. It wasn't the best overall team performance, but could have stood out. I mean, he was remarkably good. Obviously got the goal, but he's every time he gets the ball, you just feel like something's going to happen. And, you feel that like once he's really settled into this league and really got the grips of it, he, he's going to be a monster player for West Ham. And I really, really do hope that he's someone's going to be around for the long term because that's that's what we're in, the indication's been from a few sources. So, but we will come back um, on that and um, uh, get a bit more information on it. Um, obviously, Bowen's fitness. Um, he's, he's back in the side. He obviously led the line against Palace. I, I think he looked rusty. I don't think he looked injured in any way. I think he's just been away, isn't he, for a couple of weeks. So you, you do get that feeling that he just needed a bit of game time. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing how he copes against uh, Tottenham. We need to see a good performance. We're going to need these players to step up. We really do. Um, another player that's interesting in this one leading into it is Kurt Zuma, of course. Uh, he missed the Palace game because of a uh, burglary at his house. Really awful. It sounds terrible what he's, him and his family have gone through. So really sad. And the club obviously have put out an official statement. They're going to give him an, uh, uh, an award uh, of 25 grand so anyone comes up with any information. Um, so... Yeah, it's a, it's a real sad one for him. But uh, pleased to say, though, that he will be back in contention to play against Tottenham. So we will need him. I think he was missed a little bit. I, he, he, don't get me wrong, Mavropanos, obviously, he's going to get a little bit of the flack because of the, he was the one that gave away the goal. Um, you know, and the mistake that led to Palace's equaliser. But I do think that... And I, I think that's harsh. Because he actually, I think he's one of the better players, actually, that day, overall. But um, it'll be good to see Zuma back. I think that'll be worthwhile. It'll be good to have our captain back playing. Be useful. And we need it for the for big occasion. So I'd, I'd like to think that we're going to see the impact of him coming back. Um, Mikel Antonio, as far as you understand, it is the only player that's um, seriously, uh, um, obviously injured still at the moment. Although I'm hearing that, um, what we understand, sorry, from X, is that 
he will be back. He, I think he's been earmarked for the Manchester United game on the 23rd of December. So not too far away. Um, but that was that was a that was um, what was originally said. So but then X said to say it could be one to two weeks. So it might be a little bit sooner than that. But that was what was earmarked originally for um, Antonio. So not too long. And let's be honest, I know he, he wasn't in great form, Antonio. Uh, I we do miss him. You, you do get the thing. We do we do miss that player. And yeah, so. Uh, I would like to see him back in the squad at that other option because I'd like to, you know, when we're playing Palace, you do think maybe he'd be a good player to throw on, uh, mix things up a bit and just change the game a little bit. So, yeah, we do miss Antonio, but of course he's going to miss the Tottenham game. Um, as always, we're going to give away um, uh, something from our shop if you get the score prediction right. But what you've got to do is put down your team. Put down your team, what you want to see, your 11 and the score prediction. If you get the score prediction right, we'll put you in a draw and the winner then gets a free item from our shop. Um, so, yeah, that'll be uh, really good. Um, right. So this is my team. It is. Uh, this is what I'm going to go for. This is what I would choose. Um, to be honest with you, it's not that exciting because it's pretty predictable, I think, um, in terms of our best 11. I think I think it kind of writes itself. So I'm going for Ariola in goal. Um, Sue Fowl at right back. Uh, I thought he was actually uh, putting a very good performance. I actually did say in my last game I was going to drop him uh, for the Palace game and put Kira in, but I've got to say I thought I thought he played really well. Obviously, he got the assist in the for the the Kudus goal, but yeah, he definitely is back in the side for me after that. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, Sue Fowl, Zuma uh, back in, Agird and Emerson. That's my back four. Uh, Alvarez and Suchek in the middle. James Wall Prowse playing ahead of them. Kudus on the right. Kudus has to be on the right. I mean, he's making that position his own. He was outstanding there. So, yeah, definitely put Kudus out on the right. Bowen up front and Paquetta out on the left. And obviously with the, with the um, freedom to roam a little bit. And then the three of them kind of mix it up. But Kudus, wow. I mean, he's. I think he's made that right wing position his, um, considering the fact that Bowen, obviously, that's his usual position. Um, my score prediction for this one. Uh, I'm going to go for goals. I think there's going to be goals in this game. I really do. And I think it's West Ham. We're going to get a couple as well. I'm going to go for two all for this one. Uh, I can't put them. We're going to lose Tottenham. No way. Uh, two all. So, yeah, put your, put your um, team down, your 11. Put down your um, score prediction. You'll be in for a chance of winning something from our shop. Um, yeah, there we go. London derby, Tottenham. You know, it doesn't get much bigger than that, does it? So, uh, yeah, come on, you irons. 